Okay, it's about 10 o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to this presentation, uh, Daily Crew Connect. Today we're going to talk about Plastic Free July and kind of what that is in terms of reducing our plastic waste. Uh, my name is Alice Ma. You've seen me here a couple times before. Um, I'm the dietitian for dining services uh, primarily, but I also have sort of a secondhand interest in sustainability and mostly reducing my plastic waste and going towards zero waste. So this is more of a personal interest, but it does apply a lot to my job with dining services as, services as well. Um, and as usual, if you've been to my presentation before, uh, feel free to chime in your opinions and thoughts and suggestions and tips uh, in the chat uh, if you feel comfortable doing that during uh, the presentation. Uh, so starting off with uh, what is Plastic Free July? So some of you may have heard of this, some of you may not have. Um, it's really a movement to reduce plastic pollution, really focused on the month of July. So some of you may have heard of, you know, uh, January sometimes is called uh, Veganuary because that's really where uh, there's a big push to eat less meat. Um, July is kind of the equivalent of going plastic free. So it's one month focused on reducing our single use plastics. Um, if you want more information on uh, specifics of that and joining the challenge, signing up, um, signing up for the challenge, uh, it's still technically July, um, but you, obviously you could carry this forward to the rest of the year or however long you wish. Um, the website's listed there, plasticfreejuly.org. They've got a lot of great resources for how to reduce plastic in the workplace, at events, uh, in your personal life, in various aspects of your life, like the bathroom or the kitchen, um, and even tips on how to encourage your local government to reduce plastic waste. Um, so a lot of great tips and resources there if you want to check that out. And I will focus on some of those tips that they have uh, in this presentation as well. Um, so a term you may hear flying around is zero waste. Uh, and what does that really mean? So it means different things to different people, uh, various definitions based on who you discuss. Um, so I pulled a few things from the internet. Um, essentially this first one from the, the County of Hawaii says, it's a life, way of life that promotes the goal of reducing the amount of material that we throw away. So if you ever, you know, sometimes you may look at a piece of trash and say, oh, let's just throw it away. The idea is it goes away in your life, right? Because you don't see it anymore, but it does go somewhere else, right? It goes into the landfill. Sometimes it ends up in the ocean. Um, it's not really great for the animals in the ocean. Uh, so we reduce the amount of material that we throw away. Uh, another definition is um, King County adopted this policy to work towards zero waste by 2030. Uh, and they use really zero waste, uh, meaning that what ends up doesn't end up uh, in the garbage or end up in the landfill. So trying to reduce the amount that ends up in the landfill, either by reusing it or reselling it or recycling it. So in the end, it ends up somewhere else that's not the landfill. Um, I do want to mention, uh, some of you may have heard of this, the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. Um, I kind of invented this on, on my own, um, the six R's, because there's a lot more that goes into that. Um, so if you have some background in sustainability, you may have heard of what's called the closed loop system. So that essentially is we don't want to re reintroduce any new things in the system because if we introduce new things, that means there's more stuff that's going to stay in the system in terms of waste. So rather than introducing new things into the system, let's say a new plastic water bottle, uh, we can reduce uh, our consumption of plastic by just refusing to buy or reducing the amount of things we buy in general, right? And not introducing new plastic into the system or new material into the system. So the first two R's, um, I've coded them kind of like track lights, green, yellow, red, um, reducing and refusing. So if you, before you buy something, really think about whether or not you need to buy that product. Can you find something else to use, uh, to use that same function or serve that same function, or can you borrow it from a friend? So really what can you do to reduce the, the amount of stuff that you actually buy and introduce the amount of new stuff that you buy or you can buy, you know, thrifted or used already. Um, refusing to have that same, same uh, line. Uh, if you go to, you know, uh, a convention or a conference, sometimes they hand out a lot of plastic freebies that are just kind of cheap single use things. So refusing those single use things or giveaways also helps. Um, more on the, the yellow side, still fine as an alternative. Um, if you do have to buy something new or, you know, get some plastic, try repurposing it or reusing it before you throw it away or recycle it because that's going to, you know, get more use out of the item before it actually goes to the landfill. So you're not wasting the resources that went into the item. So for example, if you go sometimes um, get, you know, soup, take out soup from a restaurant, uh, we've certainly gotten that where we have to buy something in plastic that will reuse the container, like a yogurt container or a butter container. Um, my partner's uh, mother has a ton of uh, yogurt containers that she just uses as Tupperware containers. 
to give away leftovers and such at Thanksgiving. So something along those lines, see if you can repurpose it. Um, along those same lines, regifting it, giving it away to somebody else. Um, repairing it's kind of important as well. Um, oftentimes, if something breaks, uh, our inclination, our first instinct is, is to throw it away. But rather than throwing it away, see if you know you can repair it. Or sometimes I'll regift things. Uh, there's a great website or a great movement called the Buy Nothing Project. You can find it on Facebook. There's local groups here in the area in Pullman and Moscow. Uh, but really, just post things online on Facebook and see if somebody wants it. And sometimes, you know, one person's trash is another person's treasure. They may be able to repair it if you can't, or they may find another use for it. And that decreases the uh, risk of that item ending in the landfill automatically. And then really kind of as a last resort, uh, if you can recycle it, uh, recycle it certainly. Um, apparently, I think I've heard various stats about less, uh, less than 10% of the plastic in the world gets recycled. So a lot of it does go into the trash. So um, if you can't reduce or you know repurpose a plastic item, be sure to uh, see if it can be recycled and be very careful with that because nowadays we can't recycle as much plastic as we used to be able to. Um, number fives can't be recycled, it's normally just ones and twos. Um, and some other things, if you can find, you know, Winco or the co-op has plastic bag recycling programs. Uh, so be very careful with recycling and make sure it goes to the right place. Um, if, because if recycling is not incorrectly, uh, it may just personal photos again. Um, the silicone bags I mentioned in my uh, workshop last week about backpacking and meal planning. Um, this bag, these are uh, blueberries we got last year from the you pick blueberry farm. Uh, in, in Idaho. Um, I've reused this as a buck bag several times. I still have it. So I've, even though it's plastic, I've reused it to the point where, you know, it doesn't end up in the landfill and I'm still getting use out of it. Um, same with this plastic bag. I get a lot of samples, you know, from with my job. So I'll just reuse the bags from there. Sometimes I'll just go without bags. Um, this is a picture. I'll talk more about this of my shopping cart. Um, what I usually do is I buy a lot of stuff in bulk. Um, and I'll talk about that more shortly here. Um, do want to mention zero waste is about the journey. So a lot of times we think about zero waste as this kind of end goal, like I have to reach this thing. If I mess up, it's not going to be great. You know, I want to go five years and be able to fit all my trash in a mason jar. Um, I've seen that a lot in, in social media, uh, but zero waste is really about the journey. So it isn't about, you know, I want to be completely zero waste. You know, I've done this for a number of years and I'm not completely zero waste. I make mistakes still. Um, I still buy, have to buy plastic every now and then or mistakenly buy plastic without thinking about it. Um, so it's really about the journey and what you can do right now. Small actions over time can be a big difference. So for example, I always use this one. Um, these are my bamboo utensils. You'll see them in various pictures throughout the slideshow. Um, I've had these since, I think, what is it, 2020? I've had these since, I think, 2012. Um, I got them in college and I signed a pledge uh, when I got them from our equivalent of the, of the CCE, our service center in college, um, with a pledge not to use plastic utensils anymore. And just by doing that, um, I've reduced probably, you know, hundreds of plastic utensils going into landfill. And that really was the only thing I did starting my zero waste journey for years before I kind of incorporated some of these other tips I'll talk about. But really all I did for years was, you know, bring around a water bottle, not use plastic utensils and bring these, and then eventually graduated to bringing my own uh, plateware to events as well. And uh, so it gradually increased the amount of things I do uh, in my life uh, to be more zero waste. Um, so it is about really the journey about the small things that you can do, and not about kind of, kind of converting all at once and doing everything, trying to kind of incorporate these new things in your lifestyle all at once. Um, again, uh, this is, these are quotes from one of my favorite bloggers. Um, if you're really into reading blogs, uh, she uh, goes by the name Zero Waste Chef. That's her blog name. Um, Anne Marie, uh, and she does a lot of great things about you know zero waste, mostly about zero waste kitchen tips, but also other things. Um, but she says you know just because we can't be zero waste or can't reach zero waste is no reason to take zero action, right? Uh, just be, uh, we don't need a handful of people doing zero waste perfectly. We need more people doing it imperfectly, right? Because that's going to have a greater effect than one or two people being completely zero waste is going to have less of an effect than all of us doing a little bit here and there to be less wasteful. Um, I do want to kind of apply this uh, logic to the pandemic situation because a lot of things in shopping really change with the pandemic coming on. So I do want to bring that up in, into, the, into this context, um, mentioning kind of how I shopped before this whole thing happened. So before, I, uh, before the pandemic happened, um, 
I really did a lot of things to be to minimize my plastic waste. Um, I think a lot of us bring our reusable shopping bag uh, to the store. I did that certainly every single time. Um, I also brought my own produce bags. You'll see here these ones here, these mesh ones. Um, I use them for bread at the co-op, uh, and you also get my produce in these bags. And farmers market you take used to take those as well. Um, I used to also, you know, fill my own containers from, from the bulk bins at the co-op or other stores, depending on where you are. Some of them do have bulk bins that you can refill, um, like maple syrup, uh, flowers and grains, really anything I could get at the bulk section, I would buy from the bulk section, as opposed to buying it in plastic, because I could do it with my own containers. Um, you know, toilet paper in, in these kind of paper wraps, um, bar soap kind of loose, as opposed to getting liquid soap, although I used to be able to get that uh, liquid soap uh, from bulk bins as well. Um, things like that. Uh, so I wasn't totally zero waste. I certainly still bought a few things in packages like tofu, sriracha, noodles, things really I couldn't get, get in bulk. Uh, but for the most part, I did do pretty well bringing my own containers um, every time I went shopping. Um, when I did buy things in packages, I did opt for things like glass or aluminum cans, but you know, things like tofu always are gonna put in plastic. Um, but for the most part, I feel pretty good about my shopping habits. Um, and then I did make some things at home. Uh, ketchup, I learned to make actually during the pandemic. Um, tofu, I've done a handful of times. It does result in a lot of kind of byproduct that's hard to use up. Um, so I do do that occasionally to save on the plastic. Um, graham crackers, I've mentioned in my last uh, PowerPoint, I make my own graham crackers. Uh, yogurt, non-dairy milk, um, when possible, kind of on an uh, as able basis. Uh, kombucha, I made my own, on my own. Uh, sourdough, I've been doing more and more. Uh, kimchi, and then composting. So lots of other little home projects here and there to reduce my waste. Um, and then outside the home, um, I, you know, brought my own utensils and plate where this is actually from the all-campus picnic last year, uh, bringing my own plates. Uh, a lot of you probably brought your own, you know, thermos or kind of tumbler of some sort to coffee shops to get refilled. Um, again, utensils here, the utensils that I've had for, you know, eight years. And then when I went to restaurants, I would always bring my own little, somehow, some sort of to-go container, right, for leftovers, so I'm not using the styrofoam or whatever else they have for leftovers. Um, but again, that's been a little bit harder lately. Uh, so changes to a lot of the environments uh, of food service and grocery really makes it, had, has made it a lot harder for me, and it, it did take a little, of, you know, mental transition for me to actually feel okay with some of the changes, because that first couple of weeks, I was really stressed out about not being able to purchase things the way I used to. So things like, you know, the bulk section used to be very, very, you know, uh, plentiful, but now fewer items are not are available um, in bulk. Uh, a lot of them are prepackaged at the store that I visit. Um, Winco just reopens their bulk section, so it is a little better now, but the, at the beginning, it was definitely very difficult to get things in bulk. Um, some stores won't allow reusable bags anymore, um, or and pretty much no store that I know of will allow your own containers uh, from home for bulk items. Um, shortages on bulk items, certainly uh, I went for, you know, months without certain things because I couldn't find them in bulk. Um, and then with restaurants, I think most of you are aware, um, for a while there was no dining available. It was carry out or delivery and a lot of restaurants are still kind of following that. You can eat in at some restaurants, but it is kind of limited. Um, and then, uh, you know, only disposable containers and cups are used for carry out, obviously, because you're not going to you know, bring your own container and have to refill it because um, it's not safe now. So there are, there have been a lot of changes, certainly. Um, so which means, it brings me to my next point. So what can we still do with all these changes? Um, I do want to mention, you know, prioritize safety because these changes in our purchasing uh, habit uh, are there for a reason, right? They're, they're there for us to be safe and not really, and to promote, you know, public health um, and not spreading the virus. So prioritize safety first, right? If you can't do some of these things, definitely still be safe. If you can only you know get curbside delivery or curbside pickup or get the groceries delivered in plastic that's fine do whatever works for you to prioritize your own safety um, but there are certain certainly small things we can do here and there um, one of them is reducing so again with the whole reduce reuse recycle mentality um, before you go shopping really shop out of your own kitchen first so um, this is an example of we made cookies I think this is like maybe April or June uh, kind of early on into the whole pandemic situation. Um, we didn't have any, we were, we were really low on flour and really low on pretty much everything you needed to make cookies, but we kind of swapped things out here and there and made, made it work. Um, this is a 
mixture of like wheat flour, but also chickpea flour and oat flour and a number of different things we had in the pantry to create how much uh, quote unquote flour we needed to make cookies. Um, so only go shopping if you absolutely need to. And that will help um, reduce your plastic waste because you aren't you know, buying new things that you don't, don't actually really need. Um, and then reusing, bring your own bags if you're allowed to. Um, some stores do still allow you to bring your own grocery bags as long as you pack the groceries yourself just so the cashiers aren't touching them. Um, sometimes I will use self-checkout because again, only I'm touching my stuff and then uh, that's a little bit safer for the cashiers. And then uh, otherwise, if I go to some place at the co-op, they will allow you to bring your own bags as long as you're bagging your own groceries. Um, so that's the one thing we, we can do for the most part is bring your own grocery bags. And that, you know, if you think about how many grocery bags, plastic grocery bags are out there, um, that helps a lot. Uh, if not, uh, an alternative would be to use paper bags. Um, and then with everything else, uh, so if I can't bring my own containers to the store, right, what am I going to do for bulk items or for produce? Um, I've been doing my produce kind of loose, so I'll, you know, just buy onions or apples or whatever and just buy, you know, four or five, enough where it's some but not awkward to carry. Uh, so I'll just put them loose in a clean cart or sometimes I'll bring like a paper bag and put it uh, above the cart so I'm not touching it, the actual cart with my produce and I'll just buy them loose like this um, with no produce bag because that, that can be a lot of plastic. Um, you can also get things like shampoo in bars as opposed to the pump kind of shampoo that comes in a plastic container. Um, and then I will use paper bags if necessary like Dismores for example doesn't allow reusable uh, bag, grocery bags at all so I will opt for paper bags if they have them. Um, and then what I plan to do with paper bags is I'll use them for Christmas wrapping paper or holiday wrapping paper. Um, so this is one I did last year. I just draw on it, have fun with it, um, and we use it as gift wrap when people tend to love that. It's really personalized. Um, and then sometimes I'll get bulk stuff uh, in paper bags if I can. Um, the co-op has paper bags in the bulk section. Some stores don't have that, but if you can, use paper certainly. Um, and then as a last resort, again, recycle uh, your paper or plastic bags. Um, Winco and the co-op and I think some other stores in, in some stores in Pullman have plastic bag recycling at kind of their entrances. Um, so look for participating areas where they will collect those plastic bags to recycle because they won't go in your kind of municipal home recycling. Um, but some recycling centers like the Moscow one does have a recycling program for, for plastic bags and such. Um, the other thing I've been doing is, uh, it's a little late for this now, um, but I do have, get a CSA delivery weekly of, of produce and most of that does come loose in a container so I don't really have to worry about buying produce at the market um, or going to the farmer's market in general just to be safe. So I've been getting CSA deliveries which come usually loose like this. Um, another tip is learn to make your own uh, if you can. So uh, with things like peanut butter, I used to buy peanut butter again from the bulk section in my own little glass jar but now that I can't uh, I've learned to make my own. So just buying peanuts from the bulk section in a paper bag um, and um, grinding my own peanut butter. Um, bread, I think I used to buy bread from you know, the co-op, bring my own bag and buy, buy it. Um, but now I've making my own, which a lot of you have probably been doing with you know, the sourdough craze. Um, this is actually sourdough. It's a sourdough, a rosemary and potato bread that I braided. I'm very proud of that braid. Um, and then you know, gardening. Um, this is lettuce from our garden. We've been eating a lot of lettuce because we both, between the CSA and our own garden, um, we actually made lettuce pesto a couple days ago in desperation of using to use our lettuce. Um, so learn to you know, grow your own, make your own. Those are some small things you can do. Um, even small things like if you can grow your own herbs or uh, green onions, you can regrow those in a glass jar with some water and put it in the window. So small things like that. So it doesn't have to be a full garden, but small things like herbs or regrowing certain plants can help as well. Um, if you need to buy a packaged product, which you know a lot of times you will, uh, we will, given the situation, um, choose packaging that can be either reused or recycled. So uh, some of the pictures I have here, um, you know, aluminum cans or uh, can things in general are great because they can be recycled pretty easily. So you'll see I have a number of can things in in grocery carts, um, glass jars. When I buy, you know, sauces, dips, I don't buy peanut butter right now, but you know, sa salsa. I think I bought. There's a can of salsa in here somewhere in this picture. Uh, coconut oil, salsa, there we go. Uh, buying it in glass jars, because I can reuse those pretty easily, um, and they aren't plastic, which I think is probably going to be better than, uh, glass is going to be better than plastic. Um, paper or cardboard wrapped items, so 
things like spaghetti or pasta, any kind of pasta usually comes in like a cardboard box that can be recycled. Um, be very careful with things like paperboard or tetra packs, which are if you ever buy shelf stable non dairy milk or like broth or um, you know the paperboard kind of. Uh, half gallon size non-dairy milk or, or regular dairy milk. Um, those are paperboard or tetra packs that they're the shelf stable ones. Um, and those actually cannot be recycled. Um, they're mixed materials, so they don't go, go recycled. They just go into the landfill. Uh, so be very careful with that. Um, if you can you know, buy, get things in paper or plastic that are made from recycled paper or plastic, that's great because that's not going to introduce any new plastic into the system. So one example I have here is um, this plastic bag is from the Dismores and their plastic bags are made from 100% recycled plastic. So even though I had to get plastic, it was at least better than getting new plastic, right? Um, same with the co-ops paper bags, they're made from 100% recycled paper. Um, but again, you know, be very, be easy on yourself. It's not gonna be possible to buy everything zero waste. Like you can see here, um, I got some tofu, again, in plastic, some cheese. I usually buy, if I'm gonna buy cheese, I'm gonna buy it in a big, package to save, to minimize the amount of plastic, right? Uh, so kind of is in a sense buying in bulk. Um, and then with restaurants, um, I think the best thing to do to support local restaurants, because that's very important now, is to buy gift cards if you don't want to eat in a restaurant where you don't want the plastic or to-go stuff. Um, buying gift cards will help. Um, also choosing restaurants that don't use plastic or styrofoam to-go containers. Um, it's kind of hard to kind of, uh, balance that. It's hard for me to know what they're going to do. Sometimes I, I have, you know, researched it or called ahead, um, but typically things like pizza come in cardboard, which that's fine with me. I can recycle most of the cardboard if I rip off the greasy parts. Or if you get a burger, sometimes I'll come paper wrapped, um, which is, a, is moderately better than plastic. Um, but really trying to avoid the styrofoam is, is the big thing. Because um, really you can't reuse that in any way and it takes forever to decompose. Um, picking foods that come in large packaging, again with the, with the burgers, um, reusing or recycling to-go containers if possible. And then a big one, if you get delivery, if you use, you know, DoorDash or Mr. Delivery, um, I can't remember which one it is, but one of them has an, a, an option to request no utensils at checkout because if you're going to eat in your home, you might as well just skip the utensils and save that plastic. Um, sometimes they don't listen and they give it to you anyways, which kind of annoys me, but, but you know, you, you deal with it. Um, and moving forward, um, remember that this isn't, again, this is about the journey, it isn't about, you know, being completely perfect, which I'm still at, you know, six or seven years of practicing this, I'm still not perfect at it. Um, so do your best given the circumstances. I know I've definitely been, have, I've definitely had to kind of make peace with myself for not being able to do as much as I used to be able to in terms of reducing waste. So focus on what you can do as opposed to what you can't do and getting kind of one of those small things. Um, and then prioritizing against personal safety over all else and don't feel guilty about things that are out of control, your control. Um, some countries and some other areas are a little bit better about this because they do have regulations and policies in place for plastic waste and some countries do charge you for your, you know, your plastic waste and some cities like Seattle or Portland are better about, about composting. So a lot of it is also has to do with government and legislation. So some things are going to be out of your control and really it's uh, really up to us to kind of take action in a way, but also not to feel guilty about things that we can't control. Um, I think that's all I had. Uh, there's my email. If you want more information or have any questions, um, feel free again to write in the comments if you have any additional comments. But that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, hold on, there's one question there. Um, tricks to remember to bring my own bags. Or containers once we're allowed to do so. I typically bring um, my, so I usually keep two bags in my car or uh, two bags and a couple of produce bags in my car so that I always have them. Um, or I'll keep some sometimes in my backpack because sometimes I will, you know, just walk to the store. When I used to live close to the co-op, I'll usually just walk there. So I usually just keep some at my doorstep or in my car or uh, on my coat hanger. So anything that helps you kind of remember it or put it where you put your keys. Uh, so, or where you put your phone so that you, you do remember it alongside something that you usually will bring with you. Um, but yeah, what Amy said, bring it, put them in the, by the table, by your purse, by something that you normally would bring. Um, same with the Tupperware. If I just, it kind of takes a while to train your brain to remember those things. So it did take a while for me to remember to bring my own Tupperware to restaurants. But again, after a while, you will build a habit. So every time I hear the word, you know, restaurant or going out, 
I immediately just grab my Tupperware. That's just my, my habit now. So it does take a while, but uh, it will, like any habit, take some time, but you will be able to do it after a few times of practice. So don't get discouraged if you forget every now and then. Thank you.